Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to my uh, Saturday hodgepodge. This is the first morning I can remember since, oh, I don't know, um, May maybe when it was uh, not scorchingly hot and humid. And so I thought I'd come outside uh, and film my Saturday hodgepodge video and maybe the dogs would run around the background and not go to the bathroom. Also, my yard looks okay. <laughs> and there she goes. <laughs> Good job, Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness anyway <laughs> so I thought I'd come outside uh, to do uh, my Saturday hodgepodge video uh, and try to get this in uh, it's been a long time since I've been to the had my hair cut so I'm looking a little bit uh, 1978 I think uh, here but you know uh, and my yard didn't look too bad and there are no huge piles of dog byproduct out there I see they've gone on now um, Anyway, so there, you know, like I do in my Saturday hodgepodge, there are a number of things that come up I want to talk about, having to do uh, with what I've been reading and uh, some other stuff. So I thought I would start off by, you know, making my contribution to this discussion uh, about the Booker Prize and then about uh, book prizes in general. Forgive me if I look down. I have my notes uh, on the books in my lap. So uh, the Booker Prize's uh, shortlist came out uh, this week, and there was some mild controversy, I guess, uh, having a lot, uh, a lot of it having to do with the fact uh, that Hilary Mantel's uh, third novel in the Oliver Cromwell uh, series, this one's The Mirror and the Light, uh, did not make the uh, Booker Prize um, shortlist. I have a feeling that some of the disappointment had to do with the fact that lots of people assumed uh, that a lot of the books had been chosen uh, because it cleared the way for Mantel to win her third. Booker Prize and for every book in that series to win the prize. So when it didn't, I think a lot of people were surprised and shocked and kind of um, looking for answers and reasons and explanations. And also, I think uh, one of the things that makes this one a little bit more controversial and one of the issues I have with it also is that there are a number of debut novels uh, on the list. Now, in full disclosure, I've read none of the books on the Booker Prize list, so I'm not going to talk about the quality of any of the books specifically, but you know, what I will say and, and agree with um, with a lot of critics and, and Steve Donahue is that it's difficult for me to believe that a debut novel in terms of the quality of the writing and the structure can be as good uh, in those ways as a novel written by a practiced, seasoned, uh, well-established author who's had more time to work on their craft and to improve their writing. Um, so I kind of agree with the criticism uh, that there may be too many uh, debut novels uh, on this year's list. Um, and so one of the things that makes me wonder is, can't the Booker Prize just come up with and, and create a new prize just for debut novels and then kind of, you know, solve this, uh, solve this problem? Uh, because I do think, and as Greg at uh, Supposedly Fun says, I do think one of the great things about the prizes is that they do make us more aware of novels and novelists who we we might not uh, we might not see we might not know about, and that is one of the things I think is valuable about the prizes is bringing attention to those novels. Um, one of the things I oftentimes uh, and I, I don't think there's anything original about what I'm going to say here. But one of the things I oftentimes wonder uh, about um, these prizes is you know is the criteria for judging the books objective or subjective. Well, since the Booker Prize brings in new judges uh, every year uh, and in, from increasingly diverse backgrounds, uh, and even if they weren't from diverse backgrounds, it seems to me the judging has to be subjective. And if the judging is subjective, it's not really, you know, based on what the best written book is or what the best structured book is or what the best technically perfect book is. It's really based on what books the judges like the best. It's more of a popularity contest. Uh, where the judges choose the books they like the best. And their reasons for liking those books the best may not be that those are the best technically written books. And to be honest with you, I'm okay with that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't set all that much value in the idea behind these prizes that the book they come out with is the absolute best book of the year because I don't think it's actually possible to uh, arrive at that. Uh, because there are too many subjective things. I'm not saying a book can't be judged objectively. I believe they can. I just think when you put together panels of judges the way most prizes do, then you, you probably aren't judging that way. 
uh, it isn't being judged that way, and it's more subjective. So one of the things also I think that we see coming up, and I, I saw Steve talk about this on his channel too, is this idea that the, the book prizes are becoming increasingly uh, politically correct, to use uh, the most common phrase for it, that they're intentionally choosing uh, uh, judges who are woke, who are going to choose you know, a more, a more diverse uh, set of books and novels, perhaps, uh, than other uh, than than other people would, uh, and that the the prizes are striving too much for diversity, and they're kind of neglecting maybe what the actual best book would be. And I'll be honest with you, if that's true, I'm kind of okay with that too. I, I don't see a problem in trying to have the prizes reflect diversity, particularly since, as I said earlier, the judges and the judging is really subjective. Then. In that case, I don't mind uh, there being uh, some politics and some and having diversity as a goal. You might also think then that this is a reason why Hillary Mantel didn't make the short list. That uh, as a white woman, you know, she isn't in that category of diversity, and therefore she didn't get chosen for the short list. Uh, for that reason, I, I just point out I don't believe that that's true. I think seven of the thirteen long list books were by. Uh, white authors, if my count is right, and I think that uh, I'm pretty sure that there are still two white authors, one uh, one male and one female white author on the short list, so I, I really don't see that as being the case. What I think is probably more the case with Hillary Mantel is that her chance to win the book, Booker Prize uh, this year was hurt by uh, Margaret Atwood's co-win last year. Um, I think a lot of people felt like Atwood was given the uh, the Booker Prize last year along with Bernadine Evaristo for Girl, Woman, Other, that she was given the book, Booker Prize last year for Testament because of who she was, because of the times we lived in, uh, and that they wanted to, you know, she was too great and important author in the time in which we live to not give her uh, the Booker Prize. Well, you know, that's as political as anything, and I think there's a lot of negative backlash because uh, Ty... Uh, in a book prize, which is choosing the best uh, book, whether objectively or subjectively, really uh, shouldn't take place. And there was clearly, I think, a failure uh, in the judging process last year. Well, if that's true, then this whole, and, and there's this idea that Atwood won the, the prize last year, uh, or co-won the prize last year because of who she was and what she had done. If there's a backlash against that, then I think that affected Mantell, you know giving the prize to Mantell the year after you give it to Atwood would smack of the that exact kind of, hey, you know, uh, Hillary Mantell is too important an author not to win the prize this year. And again, uh, I think there's there's that's as political as anything else. Uh, and I do uh, somewhat have a problem with that. You know, it's not Hillary Mantell's fault that the judges last year uh, chose Margaret Atwood's novel, uh, uh, for whatever reason, but I do think that probably, for me, had more of an impact on her not winning. And the only other thing I'd mention about the Book Two Prize is, you know, it's unfair to hold it against the authors of the books who do make it, that they make it. And I'm not saying anybody does that, but, you know, on some level, if you're really disappointed uh, that uh, The Mirror and the Light uh, didn't make uh, the short list, then you're likely to look at the other books and go, well, these books can't possibly have been as good uh, as Hilary Mantel's book. And, you know, that may or may not be true, but that's not, it's not the author's fault that they were chosen instead of Hilary Mantel's The Mirror and the Light. Anyway, uh, there's my uh, contribution to whatever, uh, for whatever it's worth, to this discussion about the Book Two Prize. On to my weekly reading. This week, uh, we did actually just get started on um, the group read on Voxer uh, that I'm doing along with a lot of other uh, booktubers, and I would list them all. Uh, but I would leave somebody out. Uh, it was started by uh, Kazan, um, uh, and I'll leave a link to her channel. Uh, but we're reading Malcolm X's, uh, or the autobiography of Malcolm X is told to Alex Haley. We got through the introductory material in Chapter 1, and there was such a great uh, Voxer discussion. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying that. We have another check-in this Sunday, so I'll be reading my chapters this Sunday. I am still, uh, Patrice Jones and I are still working our way through uh, the Edward Jones stories, um, in uh, All Aunt Hager's Children. I think we have two or three more left. You know, reading a collection of short stories can be a little wearying because they have a tendency 
where my dogs went. Oh, there's one behind me. They have a tendency to be to be kind of similar and reading the same style over and over again without you know without one continuous story. I do think uh, can be a little uh, wearying, but I'm enjoying the stories for the most part. And again, I'll say I think I'm liking them better than Patrice. I finished an heir to murder, uh, Charles Heathcote's uh, cozy mystery. Uh, set, in, set in the north of England and featuring uh, a new great character, Alice Valentine. I did a full review of this on Thursday, so if you want to know more about this book, uh, please go back and look at that review, and I'll leave a link uh, to uh, to Charles's channel and to Dane Cobain's channel since he edited it. And then this week for uh, Latinx uh, Heritage Month, I started reading uh, Cantora's uh, by Carolina de Robertis, and I'll have to tell you, I flew through the first 100 pages of this uh, novel, uh, where there are essentially uh, five uh, characters are introduced, five female characters are introduced, uh, who are involved in, uh, some of them involved in uh, romantic relationships with one another, and some not, or some on the verge of those things, uh, set in uh, Uruguay of the 1970s and the 1980s, the repressive dictatorship there. Uh, and I just thought everything about that first hundred pages or so, uh, after the initial, after the opening sentence, uh, were, were, really, were really good. Uh, I kind of slowed down as I began to see you know, the direction I thought things were going to go, uh, and there has been a little bit more predictability uh, in the next uh, 50 pages, but I'm about halfway through, and I'm hoping to finish today or tomorrow because I have another buddy read uh, next week. I'll be reading uh, Scar Lover with Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics. I'll leave a link to his channel uh, below as well. And then I'm going to be reading Love, uh, Toni Morrison's uh, novel Love, because I am still involved in that group that's trying to read all the Toni Morrison novels this year. Uh, and next week should give me a chance uh, to read that as well. So that's kind of where I am on, on my reading. If you know anything or have any impressions about any of the books and I mentioned, I'd love to see uh, those comments below. Uh, oftentimes in these uh, Saturday, in these hodgepodge videos, I like to do uh, some shout outs. So I want to do uh, that today as well. And I'm going to shout out three uh, booktubers who I don't believe I've ever shouted out before uh, on my channel and some and leave some links to, specific, to some specific videos. The wind's blowing my hair up. I'm sure my bald spot's showing. Anyway, uh, to leave to link to some specific videos. So the first one ch channel I want to shout out is Sarah's Story Chronicle. Uh, Sarah is uh, participating in, in ShakeTube 2020 in a different way than most people. Her videos, uh, the videos I'm going to link to are videos in which she uh, lists her top 10 Shakespeare characters uh, in reverse order, and I watched those videos and I thought they were charming. I also want to shout out uh, Gagging for Lids uh, channel, uh, interesting uh, channel name, but he has some Booker Prize videos which I'll link to uh, below, which I thought were interesting, and I, I think uh, he has a pretty unique channel, and I've enjoyed watching his videos lately. And then I also wanted to link to Steve Partridge's videos, seven plus one book uh, he's been avoiding, uh, uh, where he talks about, well, eight books actually, then, that he has been avoiding reading for various reasons and why, uh, and he is uh, not afraid to uh, share his opinion, and I enjoyed that uh, video completely. Uh, so please check out those channels and those videos, uh, you know, when you finish with this one. Uh, if you've been following the Saturday Hodgepodge for the last two weeks, I've been leaving a link to uh, uh, to some music, uh, primarily jazz. I've been calling it Jazz for Jason, uh, Jason from Old Blues Chapter and Verse. And I've been uh, well informed that Jason has attempted to listen uh, to the jazz, but it's actually made him kind of uh, physically... Uh, ill uh, and enraged and therefore I will no longer be calling this jazz for Jason but this week I'm gonna call it jazz for Steve because Steve Donahue uh, ever a mystery Steve Donahue voiced his uh, uh, dislike for jazz uh, as well and his love for the works of uh, John Philip Sousa which most of us think of as marching band music so I chose a, a, a piece of jazz music uh, that is as close to marching band music I think is I could find, or at the very least, uh, since Steve's a John Philip Sousa fan, I believe there are actually trombones. Not 76, but I believe there are actually trombones um, in this uh, piece. So I'll leave a link to that uh, for my uh, Sunday or my Saturday uh, music link. Anyway, uh, as always, I look forward to your comments in the comment section below, and thank you for watching.